The moment when you finish a model kit, it's always pretty exciting. Hi everyone, this is Nodia Spencer and welcome back to my hobby channel. This video is about how I finished my T55 model kit. First, the lower areas of the hull have to be finished with some wet matte and oil effects. I'll treat some rusty looking pieces that remain unpainted and also I will cover how to create fuel stains and engine fluids spilled on the engine deck. If interested in how I completed the tank model, please take a seat and let's go for it. Ok, so retaking the work from the third episode of the T55, the lower muddy areas are almost completed and I applied some matte texture with enamel paints and plaster and later I applied some oil washes to change the main color of the effect. For keeping going with it, I take now this darker matte enamel color. Darker tones can be used for creating some wet matte effects and also some shading effect in the recessed areas. This time I create some streaking effect, applying vertical passes that will be blended later. So I applied the color on the suspension joints for defining them a little bit more. Also some speckling can be done with the same color. But keeping in mind that the biggest drops of paint should be blended with a little bit of thinner. When I start blending the enamel, in this case I don't mind if the paint is dry, because I can get a softer result if I want to. My goal is to create a streaking pattern that breaks the shape and increases the interest of the lower area. For achieving a convincing result, I don't remove completely the enamel. Depending on the side, I create each effect with a different grade, what will help me to have different visual results. Creating different patterns and balance the overall result is very important when painting symmetric parts. If both sets were identical, they will lose interest. With raw amber oil, I create some kind of shadow outline on the main details. Increasing the depth helps to the human eye to identify better the different pieces of the model. I diluted well the oil paint because this time I'm looking for a subtle effect. If not, the result could be understood as some kind of wet effect. Finally, with some burnt sienna and raw amber, I create some more speckling effect here and there, or changing more the appearance of the lower mud effect. And as before, I blend it until I feel satisfied with the result. You can see the final result of the completed lower area. I know it won't be visible at all, but I like to detail each piece and the result is worth enough. On the main hole, I used some remaining oil paint for applying some rusty filters on certain parts, especially in the ones closer to the main exhaust. Because the main hull of the tank still demands some work to do on it, I plan to apply first a light coat of dust, this time not very extensive as with the other model kits, just keeping in mind that I want a moderate finish, this time no very heavy dust applied on the surface. So I take sepia and naples yellow and I create a color mix. This will be a very pallid but slightly saturated to have contrast with the base green color. Because I'm looking for a subtle result, I decided to apply it with a detail brush. Finally, I applied some shades of sepia on the fuel tanks, just to add a little more variation. If you have ever tried to weather them with oils, you might know that applied by their own, they don't cover too much. And that's the reason why they'll become extremely useful for this stage. They will create a nice coat of dust effect and at the same time they will be very easy to control. I try to focus my efforts on the front areas, but also I leave small amounts of paint in the rear areas too, as everything should be integrated. For blending and removing the excess, I take clean enamel thinner. As always, it's a matter of blend properly the dust color with the layer underneath. Old paint is weaker than enamels for instance, so it's important to work carefully and apply soft passes. When blended were completed, you should see a smooth transition between layers and at the same time the dust effect should be evident enough. Once the dust effect is completed, this is the main result. As I said before, I try to increase the effect in the front ammo, leaving the engine deck and fenders with a lighter effect. And once all it's put together, I can see how the result approaches to the main idea I had in my mind. Because I've been using similar colors among all the wearing processes, the result feels very coherent. Well, moving to the next step, I take my old milk pigments for detailing and filling some hidden corners of the model. First, I leave the dry pigments on the surface. I like to leave bigger quantities first and later spread the dry pigment with the brush. This will create different intensities of texture and dust shapes. Also, for certain parts, you can spread it with a toothpick. 
and as usual, I first prefix the pigment with clean thinner. This first application allows me to distribute and move around the pigment until it gets the shape I like most. And just when I'm satisfied with the result, I use the previous oil mix but more diluted and I fix completely the pigments. Spare tracklings still remain in their base color. Two episodes ago, I painted them in a dark grey color. And now I take this rust enamel color and I apply small touches for representing their rusty finish. Applying small dots and clouds become very useful for these purposes, because by doing this it begins creating a really interesting rusty texture. I use this enamel color also in the areas next to the engine exhaust. The pieces surrounding this area are more exposed to higher temperatures and corrosion. And this is the perfect excuse for a modeler for creating some extra weathering effects. Finally, I also left some paint more on the external fuel tank supports of the rear area. When blending, I apply extremely small touches. And now the previous dots and texturing work really stands out and starts converting themselves into small and realistic rusty accumulations. At the end, I followed the same procedure in all the rusty areas of the model. Just after all the dust and rust effects are dry, I take the raw umber color by itself. Just by diluting it a bit, I use this color for correcting some shadows and defining some lost details and textures. It acts like a pink wash, and in fact it is. But the difference is that I don't apply this color all over the model. I just apply this color in the places where I want extra definition or in the areas where the previous pink wash has been covered at all. Also you can check that this effect is even more diluted and the result is less evident. Because the previous dust effect is tending to all the surface and lost detail the main purpose here is to rescue that previous work. And also when working with the engine deck, it always helps to define every tiny part and panel line. These areas with big amounts of panel lines deserve to be completely outlined. The same color can be used in some specific areas like a grime effect too. Because using raw amber has its limits, I take now a black oil color. I apply a big amount of black oil on the engine grill. And as the paint tends to accumulate by itself into the super tiny holes, the depth effect is done instantly. Alright, so once I have recovered all the definition and depth in the model tank, it's time to add the last details. I always try to follow a simple logic when weathering my model. First I tend to apply the dust effect, then the matte textures, and when they are finished, I move to the spill liquids and fuel effects. This time with sepia color, I apply some speckling on the biggest fuel tanks of the right side and the areas where the crew tends to make the maintenance of the vehicle. And especially because the fuel tanks are one of the most characteristic parts of the T55, I want to make them very dirty and weathered. Till now, they have received a few effects. But now, their moment has come. Once speckled and dry, the paint result is very unnatural, full of oversized stain and dots. So with a fine brush and some enamel thinner, I blend carefully the effect. In this moment, I also start adding different textures and finishes to the stain effects. With this same sepia color, it is a good idea to represent some grime and grease effect on the turret. In the area where the crew gets inside the tank and the closer parts to the engine deck, I create some streaking grime pattern. The rear area of the turret did not receive any special effect. And because it's a vertical area, the stroking effect will become very effective. For removing the excess and blending the oil, I take now a flat brush. I always try to change the brushes for getting different results and optimize the tools I have. And this is the result of the rear area of the turret. These stroking stains are the perfect joint between the upper areas and the engine deck. Ok, so continuing with the side fuel tanks, I take these colors for representing some spilled fuel liquids. I start first with the real fuel tank, and for making it different than the others, I will create some fuel effect that has spilled on some accumulated dirt and dust. So first I leave some dry pigment layers, and later I apply a wash over the pigments with a red brownish color. I try to create some cloudy pattern, and at the same time I blend the edges of the effect to get a smoother and irregular shape. Once dry, I complement the effect by speckling some dark oil color on that dry earth. I change the angle from I make the speckling, and later I make some brush applications with a paintbrush. Finally, with some black oil color directly from the pot, I apply some darker stains on the effect. The good thing about applying all the fuel effects while paints are still fresh is that you can achieve really interesting results. 
Also on the other fuel tanks, the application of the fuel effect and stains does not have to be so heavy. Now with bitumen oil color, I represent some fresh oil and fuel effects. It can be represented by applying it directly with the paintbrush and also by speckling it, just depending on the effect you are looking for. With this same bitumen color, I applied some lubricant oil excess effect in a few wheels. Just by applying it in some selective areas of the running gear, it creates much more vibration among similar pieces. And here you can see the overall result of the main work of fuel and oil effects. By applying these effects, I created a different area with very different finishes and attractives at the end. At the same time that the model starts fining with multiple and different detailed parts. Ok, moving to the other side of the vehicle, it's time to weather properly the engine exhaust. I want here a very heavy smoke and burnt effect. So I don't waste time and I apply directly to the surface a black oil color. As I said before, I don't like to use it too much, but in this case if I'm looking for some burnt and smoked finish, it becomes extremely handy. And concentrated the black effect towards the exhaust outflow, we saw clearly the area where the toxic gases are released. I tried to create some more smoke effect on the toolboxes closer to the exhaust to make the effect more coherent. And for finishing, with my airbrush, I check the definitive black touch. I check the Tamiya black color and I make some passes in the center area. Working exhaust pieces in this way, it's a winner formula in my opinion. The result it gets is always very impressive. Finally, if you want to represent some bored traces of fuel, you can apply some bitumen color mixed with black in the exhaust hole. Well, now all the dirty work has been done. There are still a few kit parts missing. The wooden water protective plank from the front area has to be painted. And yes, because I said wooden, these pieces have to be weathered in a different way. So that's the reason why I didn't glue it with the rest of the pieces. I start by applying a light wooden color with acrylics. And later I apply a couple of chipping fluid coats, followed by the same green color I used for the green armor. I leave you the link to that episode in the description below if you're interested in how I painted the tank camouflage. So the next stage it's obvious, with the tap water I start chipping and scratching the paint. This will remove the external green coat and will let see the wooden color underneath. Finally, because the effect that got was so dull, I took the same acrylic color and I painted some more chipping effect until I feel satisfied with the wooden plank. I think that in the end it gets pretty convincing, isn't it? Prior to gluing it to the model, I applied some washes for bring out all the details and surface wooden texture, and once in place, I make some minor adjustments of the pieces. The final result is just awesome and in my opinion one of the finest details of the model. I don't know if you know this, but the Soviet design tanks, they have in the rear plate a tree trunk. It has been hidden in all those four episodes. I was not very sure about how to paint the trunk, this piece has different textures to work with and the colors to use are also challenging, so I decided to go with acrylics and use later some oils to bring out all that crushed texture. I used a mix of orange and black for creating the base color of the trunk. My first idea was to start painting and applying a very dark base color, and later continue with lighter shades step by step, so that darker base will help me to create some artificial shadows. This very first color is pretty dark, so the next highlights should be easier for applying. Just when I started painting, because I was not very convinced at all, I decided to concentrate the brush strokes in the edges of the trunk and the center of the piece leaving some artificial shadows in between. The technique I used was to apply different strips with the brush, and I think that if I overlap them, the texture I get will be more interesting, because this piece is made from organic material, the behavior of the paint job has to be different. By this time, and because I used some pale sand for the highlighting, the overall result was pretty desaturated and far from a real trunk. So I applied an acrylic filter with a warm brownish tone. Applying this color in that way really made the piece to look like real wood, and also it gave to the piece the warm hue it needed. So at the end I had a result very close to what I have in my mind. For finishing the effect I applied some oil washes into the piece, and instantly all the recesses and textures of the piece came out, and the piece got defined at all. For removing that oil wash I used a cotton sua for getting a more uneven result. And that's the final result once everything has been detailed and painted. 
I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it is the perfect complement for the model tank. For integrating a little bit more the trunk, I applied some more fuel speckling on this side, so the trunk will look like another part of the vehicle. Ok, by this time the model is finished to a 90%. And it's time to focus in details. The vision ports of the periscopes are still painted in black. For replicate their shiny look, I give them a thin coat of gloss varnish. With a luminous color and a very fine detail brush, I paint in metallic color the inner piece of the road lights. I go carefully trying to not go in out of the dark circle. And to give two at a final touch, I apply a wash of dark brown oil. This is a very simple approach, but convincing enough for representing road lights. Finishing the last details, I move to the machine gun piece. I start here by painting all the main metallic details in black, and I apply a green camouflage color to the surrounding areas. In these pieces, the support and sides are completely painted in the same color than the rest of the vehicle, so this green tone will do its job nicely. Also, I give a darker shade of green to the munition box for making it a little bit different. Once all these parts are painted in the same way and with the same techniques as the model, I take a mechanical pencil to have more precision and I polish some areas of the exposed metal. Instead of polishing the whole piece, how I'm used to do, this time I just polish the outer edges of the machine gun and I'm really happy with the result. I think this way is more realistic and now you can see the result I'm talking about. Pretty convincing, right? For polishing the last details, I give to the tow cables a sunny and polished look. These long pieces are made of steel, so it is necessary to give them the natural metal shine. Alright, so once we have all that work done, it's time to glue all the small parts and sub-assemblies in place. The machine gun is placed in position, and I prepare the figure from the previous episode. Although I made some positioning adjustments prior to the painting, you should make some dry fit check before gluing all together. And yes, so this is it. The T55 is now completed. I hope you had enjoyed all the painting and weathering process of the model. Also, you have in the description down here all the links to all the episodes from start to finish. This is the second model finished here in the channel, and I'm working the future content. This time it will be a bigger subject, but it's another business for another video. So if you liked the video, consider to subscribe and also share it with your modeling friends, and give it a like if you find this video useful or at least entertaining. Any comments or doubts are welcome in the box below. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.